what is happening all. So it has been a long time since I've done some long form technical content and today I'm bringing you a hacking tutorial Google Sheets command and control server. I have talked about this on a hardly a week episode and called out Max Maxwell Zhao who brought this up. This post was from June 7th 2023 and I've tested this recently so it still works. It's not a I guess traditional exploit that you would pick up in AV because it's actually what would be considered living off the land but with cloud services which we all use these days so and the way I'm going to attack this is we're going to look at the mitigations first and talk about those and then we're going to go through all the steps to develop this and then we're going to run it and I'm going to run this on my host machine because I'm running it all and yeah we'll go from there so let's have a look here if I go down and Max has put some recommendations for securing against this. So this first one, email phishing controls, uh, attacks always still come in via phishing attacks. It's one of the, the most efficient ways that attack is used to get into networks. This is more for preventing against external attackers using this. You can also consider this from an inside threat perspective. So someone from your organization using trying to exfiltrate and then, uh, as it says here, as your organization grows, you have grows from inside a threat. So it talks about that as well. And we'll talk about some of the mitigations around that. XDR and seams are not a catch all. This is because XDR, unless it's probably written into the behavior as a specific use case, I would doubt most XDR would pick this up only because Google Cloud and services like it. And we're not picking on Google Cloud here. It's just the example. But services like it have these behaviors because they're used for automation. They're used for a whole bunch of things. So I wouldn't expect them to pick it up. Seams is more for the log. So if you're trying to threat hunt for something like this, you can then turn to a seam and have a look at it. Uh, but they are just part of the layer of your security in depth. The, this is a forever cat and mouse game. And at the end, I will talk about how to write and we'll maybe open up some of the source code and look at how we could change some of this and then compile again, again to avoid some of the detections we would create. Um, and then it's talking about other tools. So I think, I don't think this had any mitigations against it. No. So one of the things you can look for as well is, uh, I think it's called blocking consumer accounts. Oh. Google Cloud. So this is one of the mitigations. Um, it won't prevent against all of it. Yeah, so against consumer accounts. So this is for Chrome. And what essentially you're doing is you're stopping your enterprise users from using their own Google Cloud account. Uh, so they won't be able to use Drive, they won't be able to use the features in Cloud. For the enterprise users that do have Cloud, you can lock down, as we go through, you can lock down the Cloud features for the users. If you have developers that have to use this and you're still worried about it, then the standard recommendation is to increase the monitoring on those accounts. So you have a smaller set of, of, of accounts that you have to monitor on, but it's not your whole organization. Now this consumer account thing is for other browsers as well. So you can go and do this on Firefox and on Edge uh, and likely on any other similar browser. Most of them are built on Chromium these days, I think. Uh, so you could go and configure those. The, I guess the other thing along with that is application control, which is both for this attack because it's gonna be a compiled executable. So you want application control to prevent that, but also from users installing other browsers that aren't securely configured within your organization. So if you go ahead and block consumer accounts in Google Chrome and Edge, which are your two main browsers that you use within your organization, but you allow users to install Firefox and use that, then your security controls have been circumvented. So take these proof of concepts and kind of apply your security in depth to the whole program approach. It's not just a one fix all thing. Um, this is a good proof of concept to demonstrate that because it's quite simple to create yourself and then demonstrate within your organization if you need to argue for funding or time to implement some of these security programs within your organization. With that, let us look at uh, building this. So it's written in Go. So the first thing we will need is, is Go. Um, and I will show you that. It does Git clone, but I, you can just pull that from the repository and we're gonna do that. I don't actually have Git installed in this system yet. Um, so with Go, I just Googled it. You can get a Windows MSI, you click on that, installs into program files. And then if you open up command um, and type go 
version, you can see that I have it installed. Um, so there we go there. Then this is the repository. This is actually linked uh, here from Max's blog on LinkedIn. And it's got, well, this has the steps in it, but then we're going to use Max's one because it just provides a bit more context. And then what we're going to do here, so I don't need go anymore. Um, I need this. So we're going to download the zip. Let me minimize this and then let's extract and have a look at this. So I've just pulled down the zip of the repository because it's this G GC2 sheet go. If we open it, let's start with notepad. So it's importing GC2 sheet slash command and then it's still in the command execute. So it's importing this. So this is the root GC2 sheet. Um, so I've never really programmed in Go before, but I mean, it looks pretty simple. Um, ah, it's interesting. So when I ran this before, I was running it with the sheet and drive, uh, but it's actually using, I can use single letters. And I wonder if this, so one of the, one of the recommendations I made in another video was to you to reprogram this, to use, um, these, which it obviously has, but you could change these. So we could change this to like L P whoop, P. Oh man, typing and O, O, uh, and then that would run with L P and O. Um, but if we go back, um, I wonder if these mean that it will, yeah, run positionally. So we're going to test that after we compile and, um, we need to remember that we enter key sheet drive in that order and we'll give that a try. Um, okay. So pretty simple there. Let us go and minimize that. And then we're going to follow in the bouncing ball for Max's, uh, write up. So I'm going to take that to another page. And then, yeah, we'll go from there. So it's pretty simple, really. Um, we'll do the build first. And that's just a simple, let's change into desktop and then GC2. And I'm going to do a dir. I need to change into this again. Yep, so we're in here. And then we're just going to go go build and GC2 sheet.go. So this will take a little bit and then it should pop us out an executable in that same directory and we're going to get to run that. It will just be called gc2-sheet.go. Okay. So if we run a dir, we can see we now have gc2-sheet.exe. So this is the generic executable that we're going to run to get to run the C2 exploit that we have. Let's go back here and we need to go. So this is the Google Cloud. There's actually a link from both the articles to go here. And we need to create a new, so I've got a couple of projects here where I've tested it before, but let's make a new project. So we'll call this one GC2-test. And we'll go create. And it looks like it's creating the project. So we just need to wait for this to get a little green tick. And we're going to select that project. And then the next thing we need to do is we, we need a service account email. So we're going to go to... Uh, I'm going to go here and we're going to search for APIs and services, which is what we want. We're going to enable APIs and services. Uh, no, I don't want to, I will get to this step. We want to go to credentials first and create new credentials and we want a service account, service account name. We just need to give it a, a service account of name. So we're just going to name it the same as our um our project create and continue uh it's already given owner that's what we want the rest are optional so i'm just going to click done and then we need to download the the key so i'm going to click on this and then we go keys add a key create a new key and we want json format that's what the instruction says and it's automatically downloaded for us. So if I go back to my downloads and I'm gonna chuck this key 
into the same folder where I've got the executable because that's where we're going to use it from. I'll close that. All right, next step. So now we need to go through and enable some of these APIs and services. So the articles have links to get to the Google Sheets API and the drive, which is the APIs that we need to enable. Um, but let's see if I can get it from here because I didn't realize that I could search for it. So I want Sheets API, Google Sheets API. Okay, so you can search for them. I want to enable this and we're going to go back and we also want to enable the Google Drive API and it's this one and enable that too. All right, so we've done everything in the Google Cloud backend. The next thing we need to do is set up the drive itself for the exploit. And you'll see in here, I've done some kind of testing already. So if I go to my drive, these are the two tests that I've already done. So let's make a new folder and go from there. Uh, new folder and we'll call this GC2 test2, whoop, GC2 test2, create. Oh, we actually want to go grab the um, the service account email from, I think it's here. Yeah. So this is our service account. We need this. So what we need to do is go share. And we're going to share this with our service account. And they're going to be an editor, which is already there. I didn't need to notify because it's going to a service account. It won't actually go anywhere. This should inherit all the permissions, whatever we put in here. So we're creating and sharing this file and we'll call this the secret GC2. And then that's saving that file. We'll wait for that to save. Okay. Then we should see in our drive, our sheet come up and that's also shared. If it wasn't, then you would just need to also share this sheet. But like I said, it's sharing the permissions from the parent folder. So if we look in the share here, we've got us and then we've got the GC2 test service account that we've created already. All right, so this is pretty much it. The last things that we need to collect is the, um, the drive value. So that's, um, or the drive ID, sorry. So that's this one. So let's grab this and We've got the drive ID and then we need the sheet ID. And remember the other thing we needed is the key, which we've already got. So if I go back to here to get the sheet ID, you just need to open the sheet. And then it's, this is the sheet ID here. Uh, so if I go back to here and paste it, because we need these to run our code. Now, that's it, now we just need to execute. So you can see how super simple this is to create. Um, and we've already talked about some of the obfuscation, which I'll talk again later. But from here, so when I run it, it's gonna create a new tab for whatever endpoint I run this on. There's ways to like create persistence, like hide it on the endpoint, all that kind of stuff. But we're just gonna run it. So we've got the GC2 sheet.exe. Uh, like I said, I wanted to see if I can do positional arguments for this one. So we're going to do the key first. Now, I forget what the key was. I think I went past it. So I'm just pressing, no, I've gone past it again. I'm just pressing tab to get the key. So there it is, there's the JSON key. The next thing that I needed was the sheet from memory. I can actually go back and have a look because I've got it here. If we go to the root.key, it looks like it's taking in yeah, the key, the sheet, the drive. Um, so let's grab the sheet. So I copied that, you right click to paste it in the drive. I'll see if this works. Using configuration file authentication failed Google Sheet. Okay, I wonder, I wonder if the positional so before we say that that doesn't work let's see if I can see if there is an order for the positions set options string key sheet ID flag drive flag using flags okay 
Let's see if I can run this with. Uh, yeah, let's see if I can. Uh, I didn't want to do that. Let's see if I can run this with these switches, and then uh, we will see if it runs without them. So it was sheet and drive. That was correct, wasn't it? Yeah, drives the shorter one. Okay. Yeah, okay. So, I don't know why it wouldn't run without the switches. Maybe that maybe I don't understand go and that's not it. Uh so it's pretty basic. This is the endpoint. You'll see that it continues running as long as um this is running and I've seen this fail a few times so you just need to kind of keep an eye on it if your commands aren't working uh, or you could create persistence so it reruns itself and it will create a new tab which we'll probably see essentially you can run who am I this delay configuration is how long it takes for it to come back we can go system info take a little while but we get the system info and then the other thing that's really cool about this is uh, you can download onto the endpoint and you can also upload. So uh, data exfiltration, you go upload and then the remote path is the path on the victim machine and it will upload into the drive. And then you can also download tools into it. So I'm going to give the example of upload. And for this, we're just going to pull back the key into the Google Drive. So if I go upload and then I need the name of the file and I also need the full path. Uh, so it'll be C users Alex desktop GC2 sheets master GC2 sheets master backslash and then we want to grab the key so it's the GC2 sheet no, GC2 test dash 417604 9B C36 9B C7 no, 9B 7E 21 dot JSON and then let's run that. And it should say file uploaded, so that means it's complete. And then if we go here and refresh, I've now just stolen the key. So there we go. Super simple, really quick. If you know Go well enough, so let's let's talk about the obfuscation options now. Is that if you know Go well enough, you could easily, or not even know well enough, you could easily reprogram these key values to be something else. So this is how you would kind of first write the detection is, let's assume you want to catch someone compiling it. Well, you would look for go, you would look for go build something, you would look for the GC2, but you could rename the GC2. Uh, someone who's smart enough could reprogram this in a different language other than go. And then if you're trying to detect on the execution parameters, then uh, key sheet and drive or KSD is not good enough because you could change any of these. That makes it really hard. If you're trying to detect on the file name gc2-sheet.exe, that also won't because that's trivial to change the file name. If you're trying to detect on the hash, then someone could add just junk code into this and that would change the hash. Uh, again, if you knew Go well enough, you could add in the... Uh, sheet and drive value if you knew what it is and hard code it in so you wouldn't need those parameters and you could also hard code in the key value or just have the key as part of the compile so that you didn't need you could just use the executable by itself so you can see that as people get more technical and smarter it gets harder and harder to detect this kind of thing and again this isn't picking on Google Drive this is a problem that's across many of the cloud services and just malicious software in general the key to stopping this will be application allow listing, where you're not allowing end users to run just any binary on the system. It has to be signed. Those signed binaries, if they're internal signatures, they need to be checked and controlled really well so that an attacker can't steal it. 
and then start signing their binaries and just running whatever they want within your environment. So you can see this is a whole security in depth problem that you've got to kind of solve. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, Matt Zell did a great job writing that article. So shout out to him. Uh, it was this one here. He put in some good security recommendations for both external and internal stuff. I think the, I, and I'd said on the hardly a week that there were additional ones that I thought could fit in here and that's the blocking consumer accounts and then allow listing applications. And those are just, the blocking consumer accounts will be good for a whole bunch of stuff, not just detecting this for cloud services since cloud being used within organizational environments is so, so common across all industries that blocking the use of personal accounts is just a good idea to do. Uh, people have their own machines, they have their phones, so they don't need to use Google Cloud, their own personal Google Cloud on their corporate device, just block it. Um, and then the other thing is allow listing. So you're gonna have pushback because people will get used to a certain workflow, be flexible, implement it over time, include people in the process, don't just do it like go ahead and ask them and say, hey, we have to do this. How do we do it to not affect your workflow? Like we want you to be involved. What what applications do you need to do your job? Because we want to work with you guys and make sure that your workflow isn't interrupted or if it is interrupted, it's as minimal as possible. People don't like change if they're not involved. So bring bring everyone on board. Security is a team journey. And yeah, you guys will go well. But if you have any questions about this, drop a comment on the YouTube video. I'd be happy to talk about it. Uh, if you want to hit me up, you can check out my website, hardlyadequate.com, get a Discord link, join my Discord, uh, join in on the conversations there. But thanks everyone for watching. Hopefully this has been helpful. This has been super fun to look into over the last couple of weeks. And I will see you guys very soon with something else. Bye.